bit of colour behind us. Well, over that way. Morning. Hi. What happened to the bear clock? Oh, what happened to it? <laughs> <laughs> so good morning and welcome to the top of Mam Tour. We are at the trig point. We are at the top. It's my birthday. Yay! And I had cake. I've got cake. Darren's brought some cake up for us. What a champion. So we've got a few people up here. I put on my Facebook page, um, it's my birthday weekend again. So we you know, meet up at Mam Tour and uh, yeah, we've had a few takers. And it's quite nice to see a few faces. We might get a few more as it get, well, gets a bit better because it's a bit mm, blah, pea soup, sort of murky. It's not brilliant, but uh, you know me, the weather sometimes follows me around, doesn't it? So we'll see what we're going to get. But I'm going to point the camera at different people's faces, really put them on the spot, and they can introduce themselves and just say hello because we have we've got we've got a gaggle of people up here. Say hello. Hello, folks. Colin here. Colin here. Colin here. That's a good name here. <laughs> good, <isn't it? laughs> good morning. Daz? Daz, Darren, you saw yeah. Darren, or are you going to be Ginger seeing Darren, or you've yeah. seen Darren, or went on when the video's coming out, so. Spike Hammond, Spike. from about an hour away. About an hour away. Hello, hey. good morning, Nigel. I'm his brother. His brother, yeah. <laughs> We all know Nigel, don't we? Nigel's the one I'm trying to kill at the moment, because he's just, I'm taking him everywhere. I'm Peter, and I've, got, I've come from a couple of hours away as well. A couple of hours away. I'm Chris, I'm from Lincoln, and a couple of hours away as well. Yeah, he's a local, really. He's a local lad. He comes up here a lot. Right, there you go. That's everybody. I don't know what we're going to do this morning, apart from get the camera out. I am going to do a review. Now, whether I make this all part of the review or not, and just sort of play with a tripod and that, I've got a tripod and I've got a geared head to play with. And uh, as it's my birthday, I thought I'd bring it out today. Uh, brand new. It is swanky. Uh, it could even be replacing my Benro. So... I'm going to have a bit of a play with it and do some video with it and just uh, yeah, see how it works, see how it fares. Um, but I'm hopeful, very, very hopeful. So we could turn this into a bit of a review and uh, hopefully something's going to happen down in there, down in yonder. Uh, the cloud is really low, really thick. You can see it. We're sort of, it's on about our, our head height at the moment. So it's sort of a bit up and down. Um, it's going to go one of either ways. It's either going to drop on us game over or it's going to do something once the sun comes up because it is stupid o'clock it is silly clock um, but there's a tiny tiny little bit of hope right down there in the valley you can see those people on the end of the hill there there's a little bit of hope down there because there is a little bit of mist going on so we might get something it's mam tour it's always changeable it's always different and it's it's nigel's first time in the peak district so what better place to start than here because i'm going to take him down when it's past later on and he is going to think he's in a different world so uh yeah speak to him in a little while when i've I don't know, add some cake. So I've actually got the camera out and I'm actually taking a photograph. Um, the conditions are changing all the time, which is uh, quite nice because I like it when things are changing all the time. You can see everyone on the top there, all uh, hanging around the trig point, all getting the cameras out, all taking photographs. So the morning's kicking off really nicely. Uh, there is there is a little bit of cloud inversion, just a tiny little mist down in the valley. You seem to get it up here quite a lot in the Peak District. So. Uh, and it's really interesting clouds going off right over in the distance. So I might have to put the longer lens on because I'm just playing with my kit lens at the moment. So I've only got the small one on and using that. And uh, yeah, just going to make the most of it. But I'm actually pointing back the other way. I'm pointing back to the hill on the other side of Mantua. So we've got this lovely path, almost like the yellow brick road. And I might even paint it yellow just to see what it looks like. Following all the way down, it takes you onto the ridge line and then leading you up. And you've got these nice overhanging clouds that are just rolling over the top, which looks pretty cool. So I've taken a sort of... Uh, a focus stacked image of that. Um, my first impressions of this tripod though, um, I've got a geared head on, I've never used a geared head before, so uh, it's taken me a little bit of um, getting used to and understanding. I know you've got to twist the wheels to make it move, but once it's in position it doesn't move after that, so it's pretty good and you can get it really lined up absolutely spot on, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on, uh, possibly in a spin-off video. I might just do a video just dedicated to the tripod, um, because you know me, I'm going to end up turning into taking photographs this morning. Um, but yeah, the tripod feels nice in the hand. It's nice to get it out. I've already broke it in. I've taken a couple of shots with it already. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on with it. But yeah, check out the dedicated video just purely talking about this. Uh, I might do it in the van or something, but there's a lot to go over. That's for sure. It's not a five minute thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to carry on using it this morning and all well, all weekend. 
and uh, see how it fares. But the geared head is definitely, definitely going to get something to take, you know, to take some getting used to. Um, it is not a ball head, that's for sure. Right, so that's my first decent shot taken. I've taken a couple of the trig point. Uh, I think I'm going to go down to the gate now and get a few shots leading down the path from the gate because that seems favourable and just see what happens. Wait for something to happen and see if we get any colour anywhere. So I'm on the move, um, it's cleared up a little bit, but from the top of Mam 2, it's a bit flat. You've just got the distance, big vistas to shoot. There's not a lot really to lead you into things apart from the path that we're on. So I'm just taking a bit walk down to this corner and where the lights opened up a bit more now in front of us, I think it's gonna be a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna try and get a bit more of a lead in line, leading you down through, and then I might make my way down towards the gate, but we'll see. Uh, the last time I was at the gate, it wasn't that good. So I think I'll just make my way down here. And I'm having a chilled out morning. I'm not going to rush around too much. I'm not going to go mad. It's just nice to be out with a few people. A couple of people I've never met before. And uh, enjoy the morning, to be honest. And like I say, Darren, I think Darren's following me. Darren brought some cake, which is really good of him. So I'm going to have a bit of cake in a bit. Drink me coffee. And just make the most of this. Uh, make the most of my birthday. Right, I've got a few stones in front of me. So what are these like? Let's just put these legs of these tripod out so I can let go of it. Now I've got a few stones down here. I wonder if I can make some of these. These uh, few stones here, see if that makes a bit of interest. We'll see, see if I can set the camera up just to get that lead in here. If not, I'll go down a little bit further because uh, the light's coming up quite quick now. So I'm just in the process of doing a panoramic and I haven't got a level ahead on this camera at the moment, on this tripod. Uh, this tripod actually comes with a leveling base uh, or attachment that you can get a leveling base for it. So I will be getting one over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm not sure whether they'll be sending me one or whether I'll be buying one, but I'm gonna get one no matter what happens. Um, but it's quite nice in the distance now. It's quite nice. It's got some really nice looking clouds and the sky's got a little bit of color in it. Uh, the pinks are just starting to die off, so I'm sort of, making a sort of bit of a dash just, just to get this shot done before the colour actually gets burnt off with the sun because as it's the 19th of June uh, it's mid summertime or it's definitely summertime so you're not going to get a lot of soft light for long once it gets up it's going to be pretty harsh light so I've sort of I changed my mind from the last position I spoke to you um, which was just up on the top there I've come down a little bit lower um, and like I say I'm just rattling off a panoramic so I've got something to go home with um from this morning but it's nice over in the distance i'm gonna concentrate on that in a minute but this panorama might be just a little bit off level uh i've got the camera set up at f8 nice and sharp in the distance um, but i think the main subject now is going to be up here in front of me so i'm just going to flip my camera around so let me just loosen that off flip it back around into a horizontal position like so and lock that off and i'm going to try and get a focus on the distance because that's really good so i just got to get used to these these handles so first of all i'm gonna spin my camera back round it all takes a bit of getting used to this doesn't it? i'm gonna spin my camera back round that way so i'll get everything pointing roughly in the right direction and then i've got to twizzle these handles to get the camera in position which is the bit that i'm not used to doing um, i'm a little bit normally a bit quicker and i like to sort of just get myself set up but it's great to be one-handed um, Let's go a bit wider, as wide as it will go on that one. It's great being one-handed, but uh, not not a speed thing, that's for sure. I like to get the speed and quickly rattle it off. In fact, I'm gonna go in a bit tighter. I think I'm gonna go in quite tight and get a picture of the hill in the distance and the, the clouds next to it. Turn me handle, get me a rule of thirds, something like that, a little bit of, it's quite a darkish image, but I think uh, I think it works quite nicely a little bit more light on it, bring the highlights up. I like the cloud that's just rolling over in the back. 
So yeah, quite nice. I'm using the medium mod, I haven't got any microphones on, so hopefully the volume's okay. Um, because you never know when you're using these new gadgets and things. And it's pretty cool behind us as well, so I'm gonna turn the video around, show you a little bit of what's going on. And uh, yeah, the sound of the birds are pretty cool, I must admit. Are they warblers or something? Yeah, I love the sound of them. The clouds, call it cloud inversion, call it mist, call it fog, whatever it is, it's definitely doing something down the bottom, uh, around the cement works, which it normally does. Um, I've never seen a really big cloud inversion here, but I'm gonna get one one day. Um, I really am. Now, I'm gonna put the video on for you, on the camera, so you can see a lot closer to what I'm seeing. Uh, so in the in the camera, and I don't suppose I can point my fingers because I'm zoomed in, yeah, you can't, I can just see anything. You can see the brickworks is over that side. And then you've got this bit of inversion, bit of mist, bit of fog going on down here. So if it grows and comes across, it'd be quite nice. Um, but it's it's quite pretty to look at. Let's just move the camera down. You can see this. There's a little patch just there that's really catching my eye, and I quite like that little patch. So I'm sort of lining it up in the bottom of the image, and then I've got these slightly pastely colours at the top there, and a the slight variation. Uh, go a little bit wider, maybe just bring the camera around slightly and you can just see that that little patch just just lights up down in this bottom corner there which is quite nice so we'll get a shot there and then uh, we'll get to go down to the gate I think because I've sent Nigel down there because that's the classic shot from from Mount Tour is is the hills leading off in the distance and the recession going off and you get the gate in the foreground so I'm gonna go down there put the wider lens on and uh, take a look at that but yeah that's not a bad little picture that one just a little bit of mist a little bit of fog down the bottom there just makes it a little bit a little bit nicer I'm not getting very far, I'm just starting to make my way down to the to the gate and uh, I'll just stop to get a couple of shots of this because it's one of those things where you see something you just need to stop and take a picture. I like the rolling clouds coming over the hill just there and the slight pastel sort of limey, well lime, pastel orange and creamy colours above it. Um, but I've got this bit of a tree line sort of, sort of essing sort of leading you up to it. So that looks quite pretty. And then I look behind me and I quite like the nice softness that was all around the brickworks or the cement works. Uh, so I face the camera back the other direction. I'm taking a shot that way. So this is one of those mornings where I just take a few shots And I don't think it's a, a big deal. Just just taking something that I like. I just like the, the soft Misty sort of feel that it's giving you that nice Slow slow glow if you like just to sort of keep me Keep me in check make sure I'm not racing around. It's just a real soft Pastely sort of kind of image. There's a little bit of smoke coming out the chimney and a little bit of fog and mist around the actual uh, cement works factory. And there's a slight little hint of something going on in the fields in front of it as well, so I quite like that. But this is pretty behind, and the mist is just rolling past us at the moment, or the low clouds just coming past. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but just down here, you can just see it drifting past. If I be quiet, you'd probably enjoy it more. But yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at this rolling sort of cloudy sort of thing just coming over the top there, and then down there you've got that 
nice little patch of mist all around the brickworks, which is only that little square there, that's the only bit I was concentrating on. But it's quite nice. But I'm gonna head down that way. The gate's just down there, so we need to head down this winding path. This is nice here though, this winds you right the way through. So I might even put the long lens on and just take a bit of a shot of this, because I quite like this. So, I have changed the camera. Uh, I've put the other lens back on, I've put my little kit lens on now, my little 18 to 55, and I'm using this lovely, lovely leading line. Look at this for a path, leads you all the way down, right the way down to the to the sun that's coming up the other end, and it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter, so it's really hard to co control the dynamic range now. So at f11, I'm bracketing the shots to make sure I get two exposures over, two exposures under, and uh, that way I should have everything in, hopefully. Um, the cloud, and well, it's really quite an eerie sort of funny colour. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, it's sort of two-tony, it's a bit sort of weird, but I think that's where the light's catching the top lot, top lot and the, the blueness is at the bottom, so it's very two-tone, you've got these two different tones, but um, I think I ought to go down to the gate, I think they're all down to the gate, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna head forward and uh, keep going that direction to try and catch up with everyone, because at the moment I'm all on my own here, everyone's gone off and left me. It's my birthday and everyone run away. But oh, it's just nice. It's, I, just, I just enjoy being out. I don't care. It's never nice getting up at three o'clock in the morning, but it is nice being out and seeing the sun come up. I must admit, it's uh, it makes a lot of difference to your day once you've seen this sunlight or the first light in the morning. I want to bring up something as well. I want to. I've um, I've had an idea. I want to do a little mini series. Uh, I want, I'm looking for four people, four, four beginners, four relatively newbies, but you know, proper amateur style photographers that want to learn something, want to, to use me to their advantage, to, to quiz me, to test me, to, uh, you know, to come out on locations and, and stuff. I'm looking for four people. I've already got two in mind that's already contacted me for a post I put on my Facebook and on uh, YouTube posts. <clears throat> but I'm looking for four people, any age, but you've got to be able to walk. You've got to be able to do some of the things I do. That doesn't mean climbing and risking your life. It means walking, you know, stepping in water, going through forests, going up a few hills, things like this this morning. Um, and I'm going to take you on four different adventures, or you're going to join me on four different adventures. We're going to go and do a seascape, a woodland, uh, there's a badger. I've seen my first ever badger. The badger's just run past me. I've seen my first ever badger run. That is so cool. So cool. I bet you didn't see it, but I've seen him. He's just legged it across the field. Um, yeah, that's throwing me right out. But yeah, we're going to do a seascape, a woodland, sort of a mountainy sort of scene. Um, that doesn't mean climbing up a mountain, but it doesn't mean getting in the mountains. Um, and then some other style of scene. We're going to do four different things. We can do some long exposures, bit composition, uh, trying to find a tree, you know, in the woods sort of thing. Just just general learning. Uh, all the stuff I do on my videos anyway. So if you're interested, please leave a comment. Contact me via my email, through the website, through Facebook, through Instagram, everywhere and anywhere. Just contact me through that and uh, I'll have a chat with you. See if you're a worthy sort of... I was going to say opponent, but I'm not looking for an opponent. I'm looking for someone that's, you know, I don't want anyone that's too good at what they're doing because obviously I want to show people how to, how to use their camera. Um, but, you know, I don't mind. Contact me and we'll have a chat and we'll see see where you are. And uh, I'll put your names in a hat. So that's the plan. So if you're interested, let me know. Right, I'm going to shut up and I go down and find these guys, concentrating on not slipping off these rocks, these steps. And... Uh, we may even walk down to the lone tree that's down the far end. Looks like I'm going to miss the classic. I'm not going to make it down there in time because the sun's just coming over the top now. So I'm trying to do some bracketed exposures with the sun just, just muted enough to get uh, a little bit of uh, the ring of the sun in the, in the misty foggy bit. So it's just coming over the top. So it's actually quite high in the sky already. It's come up really, really far. So these guys down here must be getting quite some awesome shots with the gate and stuff on it. So I'm missing out on that one. But I'm still heading that way and I'm just gonna snop, snop. I'm gonna snop, I'm gonna stop and take a few snaps as I go, uh, or a few educated photos as I go. And the cloud and the mist around the top of the actual, around the actual, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking hill is quite uh, good. Now this tripod's got a lovely 
smooth action about it, which I really do like. It locks off nice and it, it does lock off really, really well. It locks off nice, it's got a lovely smooth action to it, but like I say, the old uh, geared head's taking me a, a little bit of getting used to. It's okay, it's, it's not something that I'm not gonna use. I'm definitely going to use it. Um, it's just gonna take me a bit of getting used to. I like the fact that I can set it up and just fine tune the image really, really delicately just twist the knobs just slightly just to get a perfectly level, get the height just where I want it, check me focus, it's all good, the sun's really bright, I've got F22 but it's not giving me a sun star so I'm going to go back down to F11, let's go F14, compromise, there's a nice little bit of wispy cloud just just over the top. It's quite a nice shot actually. It's, it's a very classic-y shot from here and you can just see the sunlight now just starting to hit me so it's it's going to burn off quite quickly now and the dynamic range is going to start to go off the Richter so the sun's going to come up. It's going to obviously blow out and be pure white and then we've got the, the really dark uh, hillside in front. And I think I've got a speck of dust on the lens. You can just see it can just see it let's give it a bit of a clean look we've got a big load of people coming out to play now behind me so let's give this a clean just as the sun comes up just as the sun's coming up so we'll give that a nice give that a nice clean get it nice and clean and then we'll just see if we can just get this sun just as it comes up let's see if we can hit the f22 get a little bit of a sun star a little bit of flare on it that, i think it's pretty much it um, but what I will do is I'm going to put my video on for you. Let's bring the light down a bit. Right, I want to try and show you how I get rid of sun flare. Now, you can see in the image, you can see here I've got this sun flare. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's the sun coming off and coming down and catching the sort of lens. So you get this sun flare in the image. And if you put your hand over the image, just like that, you can just see the sun flare disappearing. So if you take one for this, and then take one with your hand over it like that, and then blend the top of the image in with the bottom of the image. So you get your nice sun shot at the top, and then you get your bottom image without these sun flares. So to say, if you just look at that one there, so I put my hand down, you see they just disappear. And that's how you get rid of your sun flare. I have got a belter of a shot in front of me at the moment. An absolute belter. Uh, <clears throat> the cloud, the low cloud is coming over the, over the sun. As you can see there, the low cloud's coming in and just muting the sun out so it's not making it too bright. But look at this down here. We've got these lovely bright highlights in the, in the rolling hillside. So you're getting some lovely tones in the sky and the tones in the hill. And I've come down onto the grass a little bit and I've got all these little tiny flower buds, uh, all these little textures that are going on in, for, in my foreground. So quite a wide shot. We've got the mist and that that's separating those hills. We've got the sun that's muted by that cloud. The whole scene looks mystical and atmospheric. It really is a beautiful little shot. Uh, the only thing I might have to do is clone out all the people that are stood down there with the cameras and all the walkers and hikers. Um, I could try and go in a bit closer and see if I can get rid of them. Let's see if I can go in a little bit tighter and just see if I can get rid of them. Move the camera up slightly. It's all about that sun. And we'll try that. It is absolutely beautiful. What an absolute stunning photograph. Very, very pleased with this one. One of my favourites from Mam 2, I think. It's just got enough atmosphere and enough mood going on. There's just a drone coming over my head now. So that's gonna be a thing to get my drone out. That'll be Darren's. <clears throat> but yeah, what a, what a fantastic little photograph that is. Can I go in any tighter? I can go a little bit tighter, but I just start to lose the, I lose the foreground if I go too tight. And I think that's, that's where I need it to be. I need that foreground in the image. I need the sun in the image. I need it all in really. Beautiful. Really, really nice. I just love all the tones in that. Going from the rolling hills, the mist, the fog, the little tiny flowers, the leading line from the pathway, and then the, the layers of the hills in the background. <clears throat> I might put the long lens on because 
I think that's a bit of an opportunity that doesn't need missing. So I'm going to whack the long lens back on and get a shot of that. Then I'm going to get my drone out and show you what this place is really like. I want to try and show you what I'm looking at. I've put my video on on the camera. I want to just sort of show you what I'm looking at with this longer lens on because it's absolutely stunning. Can you see this? Look at this here, this beautiful, beautiful stuff going on here. And the sun's just up there and I've got it in the picture, but this here, you've got this path going on. He's got this beautiful thing. He's got the little lone tree in it. That there is absolutely fantastic. So that's what we've got the camera set up at the moment, taking a picture of that. And uh, it looks absolutely mint on the back of the camera. The sun's just going a little bit higher now, so I'm just going to lift the camera up just slightly. And that's where it made it easy. Look at that, all I do is twist that a little bit higher, and then I'm going to take another one. Definitely bracket in the shots, but it's going to be very dark and moody in the bottom, I think. I'm going to keep the, keep the light down as much as I can in the foreground. I think it needs to be, um, because it's like backlit. But a beautiful, beautiful little shot. And that little bit of mist and low clouds just rolling over it. Very, very nice. Very full of layers and stuff. It's really, really beautiful. Um, you can see the atmosphere behind me. Mam Tour has just disappeared behind me. Look at that. The fog's come in behind us. So that's all disappearing. When it's past over there is looking pretty spectacular as well. So I may flip the camera around and get a few shots of different bits with the light on it because it's looking pretty cool behind us. So I'm going to do that and then uh, go and catch up with the lads, go and get a chunk of my cake, drink my coffee and enjoy the rest of the morning. Speak to you in a bit.
<laughs> right, Darren's got the cake, so I'm going to get him to get the cake out of his bag because everyone's going to be forced into eating a bit of cake. So I'm not eating it all. As, as greedy as I am, I'm definitely not eating it all. I'm trying to find somewhere to put me try for me GoPro. I'm going to balance it on there, see if it stays there. It'll only fall off once, won't it? Stay, get your level, something like that. You won't be able to hear me because obviously I haven't got my mic on. I've just got my mic on the top of the camera. So uh, yeah, we're going to eat this. And I'm going to drink my coffee. <laughs> and I'm going to take oh, my, no. My coffee's gone. Water. <laughs> Chocolate sponge cake. How cool is that for a birthday? I've <laughs> got no knife or anything though, no have knife. we? No knife. In fact, I've actually, I have actually got a knife. Let's balance that on there. I have got a knife. Yeah. I have got a knife. Oh, hang on. We've got a pen knife coming. That's what I was going to get my pen knife out. Let's, let's do slices. Just clean. Oh. That's a good idea. I'll pull it down. Pick you up your rubbish. I'll put it down, you can collect it. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to nick that bit of chocolate off the top. <laughs> right. Everybody come and get a bit of cake. Oh, it's got cream in it as well, mate. Oh, yeah. Look at that. How cool is that? He can come on any of my adventures. <laughs> there you go, sir. Let's oh, go round. Thank you. I've got the rubbish. You like the coffee, isn't it? Very nice, thank you. This is... Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Really good of you. Just watch that knife, it's very sharp. Maybe right there. The joys of living next door to a bakery. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, just what the doctor yourself. ordered <laughs> with a latte. There you go. Thank you. That's how we roll. Steady. Look at this, look. 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 Here he is. Roll. Proper, proper yeah, stuff. I love my face. Yeah. <laughs> Take Nigel for a bit of a walk now. I'm going to walk him down to the tree. Just for a bit of an exercise. We're not going to go mad this weekend. We're going to go for a nice gentle walk down there. Maybe take a couple of snaps of the tree if there's anything that's worth taking pictures of by the time we get there. And we'll head back to the van, get ourselves some proper breakfast. <coughs> and, uh, and then we'll head up. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to finish it off. Oh, look, I've got to finish the piece off that I nicked the chocolate off. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll head back, get proper breakfast, and then we're going to head off somewhere else later on. So. Um, I'll check out now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me for my birthday. Again, we're at Mam Tour. Let's do it again next year, shall we? I don't see why not. Um, conditions have been pretty good. Got a couple of nice snaps. I know I didn't talk to you with Hurum very much, but uh, yeah, at least um, at least I've got cake. Till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell a friend and all that. Ciao for now. See you soon. Say bye, everyone. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs> There's always one. Cake. Cake. I'm going to finish this off. Ciao. See you soon. Is that the tree we were taking yeah. from back there? Yeah, oh. yeah. Right, so they're all taking the mick out of me here. And uh, I said that I might just do a little clip on on the end. And he go, all I heard was, yeah, you do a lot of that, don't you? We've just come from right down yonder. And I think I mentioned down there that we might walk up and bring Nigel up to the tree. Well, this is the tree. This is it. This is that tree that you see down there that looks absolutely amazing and spectacular. But when you get down here, it's just, it's just a tree. That's all it is. But and it's right next to the sort of woods as well. But the way it's sat, you know, way it sits on its own from back there, it really does separate it and looks, it looks pretty cool on its own. I'm just listening to the birds up there as well. But we have made our way up and uh, I would like to say whoever, whoever or whoever um, has put the work in to put the path in that leads you down here, spot on. Absolutely amazing. If this is what you use the money from the National Trust and things like that, happy to pay it all day long because that pathway now used to or used to be really boggy and muddy and this last section was quite a bit of a scramble now it steps all the way pathway all the way pretty much all the way anyway and where it was muddy there's a lot of sand and grit so it, it is a brilliant pathway very very nice thank you very much spot on uh, keep up the good work because i know that's not easy i've done some sandstone walling in the past and it's not an easy thing to do so i'm going to take a couple of shots here um chuck them on the end of the video just to show you what it's like here because we had some amazing conditions as we were coming up put the cameras away so i've got my phone out and took a couple of snaps on my phone the way the mist rolled in around us was absolutely fantastic so uh yeah i'm just gonna take a couple of, couple of shots here i'll put them on the end of the video and i am definitely going now and uh we're gonna chill out and just have an hour or so here just do nothing see you soon yep 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 i know what you're saying he's back again this guy is such a liar he never turns the camera off when he says he's turning the camera off reason being is 
I've got a corker of a shot set up. And I wanted to show you, and I wanted to talk about it because it's worth talking about. And uh, this is why I wanted to switch the camera back on. Um, I was a bit soon turning it off, I think, earlier on. This is what I've got set up, vertical. I've got my little, what I call my kit lens, as you heard me say before, my 18 to 55. We're at, ooh, 20 mil-ish. Um, and I'm pointing the camera down. And the reason I'm pointing the camera down is look at these rocks here in the foreground. I've taken a couple of selfies up here on the rocks as you do. Uh, everyone else is taking selfies. Even the, the selfie virgins up here have been taking a few as well. Um, but I've got these rocks in the foreground, which I really, really like. Um, they're leading you off to the hill on the pathway and the light's just coming across now. I've been waiting for the light to come across the hill. It's just on the path. And then you've got the path. So you, 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 your image starts in the bottom left. And I could even turn this on the video for you, couldn't I? And actually show you what it is I'm talking about. There we go. Let's put the video on. So we've got this nice set of rocks down here in the foreground. This is leading you around. So you've got this nice lead and it sort of takes you around to the path on the edge there. The path then leads you down. And this is what I was waiting for, this little patch of light. Leads you down. It goes over in the Mam Tours there. Now, earlier on Mam Tour, you could see a little bit better. So I'm going to be able to use the the last couple of images to get the sky and everything back here that I wanted and then I can use this image now with this light and that light there is really really good so I'm going to have to turn the video off quickly turn it back over to photo and quickly get a shot of that while the light's in that position um, so yeah I did have to switch the camera on just for that because I think this is well worth it the midges are out they're eating me my glasses on my head because I'm steaming up because it's dead warm it really is muggy and close I'm at f14 this is giving me a lot of depth of field in the image I don't really want to stack it um, so I'm just taking it at f14 and focus on the foreground um, but this is a real cracking cracking shot from here it really is nice I just love all the lines in these rocks and you're looking over looking all the way up the path um, so yeah it was well worth switching you back on really just to show you that um, I've taken a horizontal one as well, but the vertical is definitely the one to go. Uh, the drone's coming out. Darren's just had his out. He had a little. Darren's just had his out. His drone, that is. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get mine out. Have a little bit of a fly around and probably probably end on that. But there's all all sorts going on around us, and it just seems silly to end. I mean, I might just get my camera out and do a few handheld snaps because where they've been building the walls, you've got all these rocks around up here at the moment. Obviously, we've been using it for setting, you know, set stones or whatever. And he's just got nice little patches of light. I mean, look at it over there. You know, it really is nice. So it's well worth taking a few to go home with. Just need this light to break here. We'll see where Darren is at the moment, pointing that direction. He's, he just said, look behind you guys. And there was a little gap in the, in, the, in the fog, in the mist. And it looked really good. It had a very Iceland feel about it. But by the time he got his camera out, it had gone. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put the long lens on, I think, and just snap a few of the images. And now I'm definitely, 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 definitely going and uh i am honest <laughs> no i am i'm going i'm gonna put my drone up and uh see you soon ciao